While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Jeremiah 31, and verse 31. How, how important are you? You finna find out how important you are to God. Let's see, read. The Jeremiah. Yes, ma'am. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. which my covenant they break, although I was in husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Jump down to verse 35. Verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, mm -hmm. and the ordinance of the moon, and of the stars for a light by night, Read. which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Uh -huh. And those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord. Then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Read it again. And if those ordinances depart from before me, uh -huh. saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation from me forever. If there's no sun, no moon, basically, make it plain. You're the reason why it's the sun and the moon. If you ain't here, it's no need of him having all this stuff. Don't that sound like you very important? Yes. The sun and the moon. That rise in the sky, all that's there for the nation of Israel. He said, if those ordinances depart, the children of Israel are going to depart. I don't have no need of this stuff if my kids ain't here. That's how God feel about you. So stop worrying about the other races. God said that they are nothing. And he said in more than one place. Let's go back to this judgment. Now, this is the judgment of the Caucasians. That's what our ancestors painted on the Veronate church in Romania. They painted the judgment. Does the Bible talk about them being judged? Let me ask y'all this. We were lynched, were we not? Who familiar with Emmett Till? Don't y'all think it should be some judgment for that? Yes. Give Revelation 13 and 10. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. This is the Apostle John writing this. He said, if any man have an ear, let him hear. You got to understand it. Listen up. Read. He that leadeth into captivity. Let me ask this. Who led us into captivity? Who took us into slavery? Read that again. He that leadeth into captivity. Those that take people into slavery. Read. Shall go into captivity. They don't read this in the church. No, I remember one time you you everybody go through that phase when they try to change themselves. Before I came across this knowledge here that I'm sharing with y'all, you try to go to church. I never heard that verse in church. Yes, ma'am. You will not hear this verse in church. The Bible is telling you. The people that did us wrong, God is going to pay them back for doing what he did to us. That's why Christianity is the worst thing on earth. You know why? Christianity's message is, oh, everyone needs to be saved. No. What group of people need, need saving? Let's start there. What group of people need saving? We do. You can step outside in the 103rd and see what people need saving. The earth don't need saving. The Israelites need saving. That's right. You. Read that again. He that leadeth into captivity. The people that took us into slavery, which is the Caucasian race, which is the Arabs, the Chinese, all of them had a hand in our destruction. 
read shall go into captivity you took people into slavery you're gonna go into slavery that's what the bible say read and that's the new testament by the way that's the book of revelation the last book the new testament read he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword we're not we killed we were lynched after we got out of slavery you had the clan get formed and the clan was killing us you know something that i found out that i didn't know who's familiar with the neighborhood of marquette park i, I was uh i encountered an older woman and she was telling me about marquette park she said it used to be a lot of clan over there i said what you go to marquette park it's blacks and mexicans there now back then she said it was clan over there. Not only that, Marquette Park, yep. I met a lady too, who was born and raised in Inglewood. She told me blacks could not go on Damon. I said, what? She said they used to chase our people off of Damon. When you go on Damon now, it's all us on Damon. Blacks and Hispanics. Back then, they used to chase our people off Damon. I'm going, so well, hold on, Miss Kathy. Marquette Park is the same park where Martin Luther King got hit with the brick. Mm. Yeah. I thought that happened somewhere up north with the Caucasians. No, that happened right here on the south side. These are things we don't know. Go ahead, you was gonna say I was something? Gonna say over there in Bridgeport. Yep. I Bridgeport. Little kid, I couldn't go over there. My father and mother wouldn't let us walk over into Bridgeport. We was in that area. Call the cab, get out of there. That's all facts. Okay. I know you're saying facts. And then years later, I saw um, we were Bridgeport coming over to the black side, like towards State Street, the uh, projects. Mm -hmm. And then I looked up one day, and they walking up and down State Street, white folks. Now on 35th State, they had a uh, what's it, Starbucks, some kind of mm -hmm. uh, coffee place. They said now in front. They couldn't go there before. So it's merged. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is now. What you're saying is facts. Yep. I met another lady. She said they used to duke it out. If you had if you went across that bridge at the wrong time, you had to fight. That's over the damn right. Yep. yep. You had to fight. Uh -huh. yep. Another older gentleman said when they would go to the Sox game. Oh, please. He said they had a big fight with them in the bathroom. And they had to hurry up and run back across the bridge yes. Yes. to the black side of the bridge. Yes. These are things our people don't know. This stuff be right up under our nose. But let's not forget what God said. All that stuff we went through, all that stuff they did to us. Read that again. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Those that took us into slavery, they're going to go into slavery. That's what this image is showing on the Veronae. Now, our forefathers, our ancestors, they made sure they got the right paint. Who is this down here? That's Caucasians down there. Okay, cool. You see the difference? Angels black, the hand of God black. You see all these, these people going into chains? They got chains on their necks. Caucasians. That's what we reading right there. Read on. He that killeth with the sword, must be killed with the sword. They killed a lot of us with the sword. Later on, it was the gun. Read. Here is the patient and faith of the saints. Uh huh. That's it. Say, here is the patience of the saints. We patiently waiting for God to do what? Save us and pay them back for all they evil. And that's what's going to happen. You had your hand on me? Go ahead. No, I'm saying, you know, like a lot of times, now, even now when people do things, you know, like they feel they can get away with it, like murder or whatever, you know, but in the Bible, God says, vengeance is mine. You're not going to get away with it. Period. That's say that all throughout the Bible. Get uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 14, every work into judgment. So all that stuff they did to us, it's a book called A Hundred Years of Lynching. It ain't nothing but pictures of us getting lynched. You know they used to make postcards. They'll all stand in front of us while we hanging in the tree dead. 
they'll take a picture and make postcards and send it to each other. God said they're going to pay. That's what Revelation 13 and 10 says. He that killeth with the sword, he that leadeth into captivity, the same thing going to happen to you. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment mm -hmm. with every secret thing, mm -hmm. whether it be good or whether it be evil. God going to bring everything into judgment. It's stuff they do to us that we don't even see. Like you see these viruses and stuff that's being made. Thank you. They tamper with Thank animals, you. flesh, animal DNA to make things. Why? To affect us, to kill us. Put bad food in our communities. Yes. Yes. But then when you go downtown, they got clean vegetables, clean fruit. When you go downtown, it's night and day from the south side. Yeah. It's night and day from the west side, the east side. They make sure that we are at the lowest and they are at the highest. That's not done by accident. That's done on purpose. But now you know why. You the people of God. These things happen because we sin. Give me 2 Maccabees 7 to 32. Yes, sir. Let's get uh, the next image. The next image after this one. 2 Maccabees 7.32 Why are we suffering? We can't forget that Book of 2 Maccabees Chapter 7 and verse 32 For we suffer because of our sins Why do we suffer? Because of our sins We are suffering as a nation, as a race of people Because of our sin What is sin? 1 John 3 and 4 Because I heard that Don't sin You hear that when you're little Don't sin God don't like I don't like that if you sin it we don't know what it is though. Read. First John chapter three, verse four. Whosoever committeth sin, whosoever does sin, transgresseth also the law. Transgress means break, oppose, go against. So when you sin, you are going against the rules God said. That's it. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of God's laws. Let's get one of God's laws. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. This is a rule that us as the Israelites are supposed to be keeping. Because remember, why we suffering? Sin. Why we going to slavery? Sin. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Mm -hmm. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What that mean right there? These is one of the rules that we supposed to be following. I, I went there for an example. You know what's funny? I'm glad all y'all see it. You know, some women, when we read this, they be like, uh, boots? Come on now. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking about no boots. You know what that's talking about. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What that mean? Dress, dress. Very simple. God don't want his kids cross-dressing. Remember what we read in the other scripture. He don't care about everybody else. He worried about you. I don't want you cross-dressing. That's right. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. It said all that cross-dress are an abomination unto him. If you look up the word abomination, it means filthy, disgusting. So when he see his children up here cross-dressing, that's disgusting to him. He don't like it. And that's sin. These are things that we don't know. We don't know this. Give me uh, Leviticus 19, 17. These are things we don't know. Right here. Here's some examples. Look at how we painted the women back then. Did we paint them with pants on? No. What they got on? You see that? Pants for women came during what time period? Good question. The feminist movement. What year was that? That was like the 60s. Yeah. Late 60s, I believe. Yeah. The feminist movement. And you know what's funny about that? The feminist movement comes right after we was up here battling and fighting for civil rights and all that. In comes the feminist movement. And what did they do with that? They pulled the black and Hispanic woman away from the black and Hispanic man. Yes. Before that, 
We was the Black Panthers, the Young Lords, AIM, American Indian Movement, Brown Berets, fighting for the people, revolution. But then the feminist movement come, and then the woman like, yeah, the black and Hispanic woman like, yeah, I gotta be liberated from the black and Hispanic man. Like, wait, what? You was just getting hit over the head with a with a, a billy club and holes with, with water holes and dogs. What you talking about getting liberated from me? That was all a plot, a trick. Think about it. Do this make sense? A man's bra. Women pants don't make sense. I said, do a man's bra make sense? No. So women's pants don't make sense. Well, I'm sorry, it's cold outside like a day. I'm having on pants. I don't care. So that's what you could do. You gotta care if you love God. If you wear your dress, what you supposed to wear underneath it when it's cold? Well, Say that again. Tights. tights. The women of today, they wear the tights outside. You ain't supposed to do that. They wear the tights outside, whether it's cold, raining, snow. The tights is what you're supposed to wear to stay warm. Because how you think these women stayed warm during this time? They had to put some tights on. And that's what we did. Leg warmers. Leg warmers, all that. That's what you guys think about it. That's, I never heard of that. That's something that women don't know. Actually, it doesn't make sense to say not to wear a dress because it's cold. Because the concept of an overcoat is to create a long garment to protect you from the cold. Mm. So the dress would protect you better than pants would. Mm. That make a whole lot of sense. God know what he's doing. Yeah. That's why he gave us a dress code. The man got pants. Pants got what on the front of them? Okay. Zipper so we can go to the bathroom. It's simple. God made things very simple. It's this world that's made things confusing. Exactly. Exactly. Get collages two and eight on that same thing that you just said. Because even in our own images, you see the women in dresses, beautiful in their dresses. That's better than what you see today. Today, this is disgusting what you see. I know. I've said I did many days in the summertime. Oh, that's the worst time. That's the worst time. And I was disgusted. And part of that is because we don't know who we are. Read. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 Beware Lest any man spoil you Lest any man spoil you Read Through philosophy Do what? Philosophy That's the white man's philosophy Wear what you want to wear Be free That's not what God said God said the man wear pants The woman wear dresses This is how I made you That's it Simple and This is his world Exactly But then Cut on the TV and here come the confusion. He's six foot five. He want to wear a dress. What? He want to put heels on. That's confusion. They're allowing children to change their gender. That's what's going on today. Yeah. They're allowing men to dress up like women and read to kindergartens. That's confusion. Get that in First Corinthians. Hold that. Get that in First Corinthians fifteen. In verse 33. Yes, sir. That's confusion that you see. The Bible's very simple. I made the man to be with the woman. I made the woman to be with the man. They come together, they have children. All this other stuff you see is confusion. Yes, ma'am. Okay, like what about in uh, Ireland? You know what these guys like they wear skirts. You That's know. a dress. They calling it a kilt. That's a dress. Well, I just Skirt, dress, the skirt is just a shorter dress. Right. Pant shorts are short pants. Right. So why why do they wear those? You know, we still talking about men. Men wear those. And are they? What race are they? That's a, that's an excellent question to ask. What race are they? Well, those are Caucasians. Yeah, I'm gonna say white. Yeah. They not Israelites. They not God's chosen people. God don't want his sons wearing that. Read that. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's what happens. That's why you got to, y'all got grandkids. Yeah. Don't be so quick to put them in front of that TV. It's a lot of filth on that TV. Yes, it is. It's horrible. That's how they get their mind corrupted. I saw a video. It was a woman. She allows her son, I don't know what she calls it. It's some type of free time. She allowed him to put a dress on for a certain amount of time. I'm like, what? Allows this little boy, he like five, six, allows him to put dresses on and pretend to be a princess. This is the stuff that's in the world. Read that again. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Somewhere along the line, that, that little boy's, his, his mind got corrupted. Because he's confused and the mother don't know no better neither. A lot of time though, that's how they wind up turning gay. Exactly. Because that's all as a, I say like a boy, you know, as a young child. You know, and a lot of times, you know, that's not funny. You know, putting them on dresses and whatnot. You know, they do, they do, they do, you know, wearing dresses. You know, they don't want to wear pants. I want to put on a dress. You know, then the next thing you know, they go from dresses to shoes. And then after that, they turn gay. Exactly. That's something I, I used to hear that from a lot of old heads. Mm -hmm. You don't let them play. You don't let you don't let no girl put on her daddy's shoe. Yes, you don't let no boy put on his mama dress. They we had a sense of that back then. Mm -hmm. But this video I'm talking about, this ain't no old video. You can look this up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So when that little boy grows up like that. That's going to okay. be the mother's fault. He think it's okay. Exactly. He think it's okay. Read that again. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. When you allow bad behavior in front of your children, your grandchildren, it will corrupt them. It's the same thing when a little boy go out here start selling drugs. You can't let them hang around. Okay. Them little boys over there, they always in some stuff. You... You, I'm finna put you in a program or something. You're not going over there. Because what's gonna happen? They're gonna corrupt them. Every time. Yes, ma'am? And I can attest to that because I have four sons. Mm -hmm. I kept them off the street. Okay. That's good. When I was at work and then went to school, cool. When they got out of school, they had somewhere to go. Structure. You could come home and just hang out and let your friends come home and talk at that. No, 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 no. And one time I caught, I came home early. You know, they used to be coming home at a certain time, if I get off a certain time. I made the schedule a little different that day. And I walked up on it. And I saw some stuff. So I fixed that. You have to be as a parent, you have to be mindful of what your kids are doing all, all the time. All the time. You have to. Yes. Because if you don't, these things are going to corrupt them that's in the world. Like something as simple as what a man posed to have on, what a woman posed to have on. You watching TV, they blurring the lines. Give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. God is not the author of confusion. No, it's not. 14, 33, read that. First Corinthians. That's what you see in the world. Chapter 14 in verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. We are the saints, according to the Bible. The Israelites are the saints, we are the saints. So Paul was saying, God is not the author of confusion. When you see some confusion in the midst, that ain't God, that's, that's the devil, all day. Why is it so hard to understand? You're not supposed to wear this, you're a man. You're not supposed to wear this, you're a girl. That's not hard to understand. When it comes, it starts to become confusing. That's not God in the midst. And the Bible tells you that. Like for example, right here. Here's another image. This is, I believe this is Saint Maurice on this side. Saint Maurice was a knight, a man of power. This is what little boys supposed to be excited about stuff like this. Want to be a warrior, want to be a knight. Not up here putting on no dress. Over here, you got an image of a black king. We was kings. These is things that will put self-esteem in a young boy. He will understand that he is great. 
Get that in Revelation uh, 1 and 6. What does the Bible say we promised to be? Because we weren't just kings during the dark ages. The Bible says we're going to be kings again in the future. Revelation 1 and 6. Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And have made us kings and priests. What did he make us? And have made us kings and priests unto mm -hmm. God and his father. This is what we don't know. If I knew that that's what's promised to me, I'm going to walk with my head held high. I'm not going to walk around with my pants hanging off of my butt. I'm going to walk around with some self-respect. But when you take all of this away from me, what I got left? No. I don't know where I come from. Get that in Deuteronomy 4 and 32. Deuteronomy 4 and 32. That's what this whole presentation is about. We got to find out where we come from. Because what's the saying? You know where you come from, you know where you're going. Right. We must know our history. Deuteronomy 432, read that. For ask now of the days that are past. We got to ask about the days that are past. That's why I was giving them examples of things that took place in Chicago. Why? Because when I got around these people that were older than I was, I listen, I'm sitting down, I'm asking questions about the neighborhoods. We got to do that about our history as a whole. Read. Which were before thee. Uh-huh. Since the day that God created man upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And acts from the one side of heaven unto the other. Read. Whether there have been any such thing as this great thing is. We supposed to ask questions. Does my history just start with slave ships and that's it? No, you are seeing your history is vast. And they hide it from you. Job 8 and 8. They hide it from you. Because when you know where you come from, you, you know where you're born and you have self-esteem, it builds character. Think about when Caucasians know they come from some royal family. Don't they walk with a sense of arrogance on them? We ain't supposed to be prideful. The Bible speaks against being prideful. But they walk with a, with a certain aura about them when they know, oh, I'm such and such Dutch Guggenheimer III. That's how we supposed to be when we know our histories. We supposed to be happy. We supposed to be joyful. Have some self-respect. Yes. So I've got this question to ask you. Yes. Yes, it is. Not, not what I feel. That's what the Bible says. It is coming to an end. And Christ told us the things to look for. So on top of you learning the commandments, you're supposed to be watching the signs of the times. Let's read this real quick. Job 8 and 8 and then Matthew 24. Yeah. Job chapter 8, verse 8. Job 8 and 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. The medieval times, the dark ages. We need to inquire about these things, the former age. What happened before me? Yes. Not only that, when you think about, when you ask about what happened before you, you can somewhat learn what not to do. Why are we going to slavery? Breaking God's commandments. Okay, I read the Bible. This is what my foreparents did before me. They didn't listen to God. You know what? Let me not follow that example. Let me start listening to God. Same thing. Okay, maybe your father had a gambling problem. I'm going to use an example we all understand. Okay, he gambled, lost the house. I'm not going to do that. You understand? Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Ask about the age before you, the time before you. Read. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Ask about your grandfathers, where you come from. Read. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing. We here today, we gone tomorrow. We don't know nothing. We got to learn from that. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 7. Then we're going to go to Matthew 4. That's what we got to do. Once I start learning all this, I'm like, wow. So my history consists of more than slave ships, civil rights movement, go vote. Right. Because that's what they tell you. Yep. And Grammar school, they okay, you can dress up like somebody from black history, that's it. High school, they barely say something. College, they show you a little bit, but don't show you too much. Once you start searching on your own, you learn more. 
Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Uh -huh. Remember the days of old. The days of old. Read. Consider the consider the years of many generations. Consider the years of many generations. What happened before me? How did we get in this situation? That's what we're going over today. Read. Ask thy father. Uh-huh. And he will show thee. Uh -huh. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. We supposed to go speak to our elders. For example, our elders wrote these words down. They telling you what happened. Why we suffer? Sin. So if we suffer because of sin, I might not want to sin. That's you learning from your fathers, from your grandfathers. That's in this Bible right here. Your forefathers wrote these words. Now, the signs of the time. Is this coming to an end? Yes, it is. Matthew 24. Yes, Matthew sir. 24 and verse 4. four yeah. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Hold on. Read verse 3 first. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when we shall when when shall things when shall these things be? Mm -hmm. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Read that one more time. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, So they came to him. Privately, when he wasn't teaching a bunch of people and asked what? Tell us, when shall these things be? When is all the things in the last days going to happen? Read. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? What's going to be the sign of your second coming? Because we always hear about Christ's second coming when he returned again. Read. And of the end of the world. And the end of the world. We always hear about that. So that wasn't far-fetched for our people to ask them questions. They was asking Jesus about that. When is going to be, what's the signs of the times in the end of the world? Read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's the first thing he said. Take heed that no man deceives you, tricks you. Why? Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. Give me one of the images. These was one of the warning signs that Jesus Christ left. He said, take heed that don't no man deceive you or trick you. Many men is going to come in my name saying that they me. This is how they came in his name saying that they was him. Is this Jesus? No. In this painting, first and foremost, this is an actual man. This is Cesare Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Leonardo da Vinci painted Cesare as the new image of Jesus during the Renaissance when they had us in slavery. Remember they was painting all them images and we showed you that? So they used his son as the new image of Jesus. Also in this painting, you got Cesare's sister in here. Right here. Lucrezia Borgia. She ain't here two times. Right here. See that? That's Lucrezia Borgia. That's Cesare Borgia's sister. Three times, actually. I'm sorry. One, two, three. This is what they gonna teach us in school. Read that one more time. And Jesus, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Did they not do this? And this just a picture. Remember, I was naming all the movies. All the posters and images that they make. When you see people come at us at a uh, lit for, for Catholicism, the Catholic Church, they love fans that they be having. Got this on here. Say first John 3 and 2, let's go there. Go second John. Yes, sir. Antichrist. That's what I'm looking for. Second John. 
Verse 7. Verse 7. For many deceive for many deceivers are entered into the world. You hear what it say? Many deceivers are entered into the world. This is one of the deceivers right here. If I take this picture and I go on the hundred and third and I say, who is this? What they gonna say? Jesus. Many deceivers have entered into the world. Read. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Because this is the thing, y'all gotta see the trickery. They either say he has no color, or they say he's white. Read that again. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That's that. Oh, he's all colored. So you're saying he ain't come in the flesh. That's not what the Bible says. He did come in the flesh. And he was a black man. But you're not going to say that. You're going to lie to me. You're going to hide that from me. Read. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. The Bible said those people that do that, it's a lot of Christian pastors. All of the Christian pastors do that. The Bible says they are deceivers and anti-Christ. They are against Christ when they do that. Because when you change his image, what else do you change? His message. Who did Jesus come for? Matthew 15, 24. He didn't come for everybody. We still talking about the signs of the time. He came for his people. He gonna say it. Let's hear, what, let's hear him say it out of his mouth. Matthew 15 and 24. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who did he say he came for? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. His people. So when he make his second return, that's when he coming to save. Because they need saving. Yes. And he's going to punish all those that did harm to his people. That's what the Bible says. Go back to Matthew 24. We're still talking about the signs of the times. Yes, Read. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They're going to take the name of Christ, put a new image on it, and deceive the world. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. When you said about the signs of the times, um, I guess I said it right. I want to uh, ask you a question. Okay, like would that be one of them? Like when they say like you're the uh, end, like you gonna live until one season from the other? Is that one a sign? And then like yep. brother against daughter and yep. all, all, um, mm -hmm. all those are signs. Yep, he actually say that the love amongst brother and sister that's yeah. gonna that's gonna disappear. It all say that in this chapter right here. Let's read that. No, stay in this chapter because it's going to say it. What she's talking about is going to say it. All right, keep reading. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are we not hearing about wars and rumors of wars today? Oh, These are the signs of the end right here. Yeah. Right now, the most recent war is what? Israel and what? Hamas. Yes. Then you got Ukraine and Russia. Right. It's many more. Read. See that ye be not troubled. He said, even though you're seeing this stuff, don't be worried. Yeah. Read. For all, all these things must come to pass. All this stuff got to happen. Read. But the end is not yet. That's not the end. These are signs. Yeah. He's telling you, you're going to see these things happen. Read. For nations shall rise against nation. Are you not seeing that? You hear rumors of wars. People talking about they finna go to war. They ain't just went to war just yet. That's why you gotta watch more than local news. You gotta watch world news. Right. Our people in the bubble that's here. Yeah. They don't know what's going on outside of here. Yeah. Read. And kingdom against kingdom. Realm against realm, country against country. Read. And there shall be famines and pestilences. Stop right there. Our people don't even know what famine is. This country is going through famine. It's people in Madagascar going through famine. They are eating crickets. They have to survive off of crickets because what? You got bandits that come through and take the food that get dropped from the aid companies, the companies that come aid. You got that type of stuff going on. You got people going through real famine, lack of food. We experienced a little bit of it here in Chicago. If you was in the neighborhood and they wrecked all the grocery stores, you couldn't get no groceries. 
you have to travel somewhere. That's a little bit of famine you experience, just a little bit. But we talking about real hard famine, no food. Read. For nation shall rise against nation mm -hmm. and kingdom against kingdom. Read. And there shall be famines and pestilences and Watch earthquakes. Pestilence. Diseases. Are we not seeing a lot of disease? Are they not saying another strand of COVID is going to come back out? And you know what? It's not just the COVID and the other illnesses. The food chain is being contaminated at all levels. Yep. I just saw uh, an alert about meat. It's contaminated. How many times they done said that? Over the, the course of years. One day, a couple years ago, talking about swine flu. Now it's something else. Read that again. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Mm -hmm. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And earthquakes, natural them. disasters. You cut on the world news, you'll be surprised. Get your Bible, watch that news. Yep. All this stuff that Christ is talking about here is happening. Yep. These are signs of the end. Read. All these are beginning of sorrow. These are the beginning of sorrows. This is the beginning of trouble. Read. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. So who is he talking about? He's talking about the men that's going to be pushing his message. He's saying after all this stuff, then they're going to start taking some of y'all up. They're going to start taking y'all and afflicting y'all, doing harm to y'all. Read. And shall kill you. And shall do what? And shall kill you. When you really dig into the history, a lot of the disciples got killed. They didn't get killed because they was black. They got killed because of the Bible. They got killed for teaching the words of God. You can look this up. A lot of them were killed. Not a lot, all of them. The only one who was not killed was John. The revelator who wrote Revelation, they tried to kill him. When he didn't die, they left him on the island called Patmos. They left him there to die. Everybody else, they died horrific deaths. All for what? Teaching the real message of Christ. Read. And he shall be hated of all nations. What it say? And he shall be hated of all nations. These are all signs of the end. These men that's teaching the real message of Jesus, they're going to be hated by everybody. Read. For my name's sake. For Christ's name's sake. Don't nobody hate these pastors. They love these pastors. That's how you know who's teaching the truth and who's not. The pastors teach lies, feel good message. Don't nobody hate them. They love them. They praised. Read. And then shall many be offended mm -hmm. and shall betray one another. It's going to be betrayal. It's gonna be treachery. People gonna backstab each other. Yeah. Read. And shall hate one another. And shall what? And shall hate one another. Our people hate each other. You seeing this stuff going on now? It's saying like it's getting worse and worse it and is. worse. Every day. Read. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. It's gonna be many men talking about that's the way to follow. God is over here. It's always some type of commercial like that. Am I wrong? It's always somebody talking about, no, I, I got the truth. I, no. He said that's false prophets rising up. Read. And because iniquity shall abound. What did it say? And because iniquity shall abound. Iniquity is sin. He said because sin is going to increase. When you watch the TV, it's carjacking, home invasions, rapes, murders, gang violence. Drug them, sex trafficking, because sin is going to increase. What's going to happen? The love of many shall wax cold. Ain't no love amongst our people. There's no love amongst any of us. That's how bad it's going to get. Read. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. It says, but he that endures until the end, that keeps the commandments. I don't want to miss that part. You keep the commandments. You do what God say through all that. Read. The same shall be saved. And you'll be saved. You got to keep the commandments. 
You want eternal life, you want to get into heaven. Matthew 19, 16. You want to be delivered? This is how you be delivered. You want to get into heaven? This is how. In church, they say the law done away with. That's not what the Bible says. Read. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, you want eternal life, you want to get into heaven, what you got to do? Keep the commandments. So why? Our pastor said, oh, that's the Old Testament. You ain't got to do that. He did away with that. How? When Christ himself kept the Sabbath day. Christ himself had a beard on his face. Christ himself had fringes on. Everything the Bible said, do Christ did it. But you telling me when I go to your sermon on Sunday, I don't got to do that no more. You're lying to me. The Bible tell me I got to do what the Bible says in order to get into heaven. You follow? Yes. You was going to say something? Yeah. Read. That's it on that. Mm-hmm. Because he said which? Keep the commandments. Which? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But if thou enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which? Read. Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh -huh. Honor thy father and thy mother. Uh -huh. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, maybe I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer. This is after Moses. By this time, Moses been dead thousands of years. This the Roman captivity. Moses ain't around during this time. Christ was still teaching the words of Moses that let you know what? We got to still do those things. But they telling you, oh, that's Old Testament. That's what Christ teaching that of. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. That's Exodus. He was teaching that on the earth when he was here. But you got a pastor telling you, oh, God, I hate the sin, not the sinner. That's a lie. Get Amos 9 and 10. What will God do to his people that sin? What will he do? Let's get it out the Bible. Then I'm gonna touch on these two, show the go over these two images with y'all real quick. We got more imagery. Read. Amos chapter 9 and verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die. What did he say? All the sinners of my people shall die. So why are you telling me in the church that I don't gotta do his rules? And that's sin. When he said, if I sin, he's gonna kill me. You see how we getting led yeah. astray? They telling you to go against God in the church. When you the Bible says do what God says, and then a man's telling me I don't gotta do what God says. Who you finna listen to? Acts 5 and 29. We gotta put away all the lies we can heard and do what God says. You got all this stuff in the world trying to pull you away from God. That's all it is. Read that. Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Did it say the pastor? We ought to obey God rather than men. That's what we supposed to live by. Man tell you, do what you feel. Be a, be a free spirit. That's not what God said. God said, if I don't follow his rules, he's going to kill me. God said, if I listen to him, I'm going to get everlasting life. That's worth more than all this stuff you putting in front of me. That's it. But the only way we get to the kingdom is by doing what God says. So going back to this slide here, here's another image of King David with a Bible. That's a big Bible he got in his hand. And you see how we painted him black. Why? Because he is a black man. Real quick, go to 1 Samuel 16, verse... One. This is the book of First Samuel, chapter sixteen and verse one. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, mm -hmm. seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? So this is after the Lord takes the kingdom from Saul, and he's going to give it to David, because Saul didn't listen to God. Read. 
Fill thy horn with oil mm -hmm. and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with him. If Saul hear it, he will. Verse 1 again. Verse is what I wanted in verse 1. Yes, sir. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So he sent him to Bethlehem, Judah. Remember, we read Jeremiah 14, 2. Judah warned of any gates thereof language. They are black. King David, black. Remember, don't forget that. Over here, this is an image of Moses with the burning bush. You know another way you know Moses is black and they didn't put this in the Ten Commandments movie. Go to Exodus 4 and verse 6. I ain't looking at it. Yes, Moses had three miracles that he did. He turned the water into blood. He turned the river into blood. He turned the staff into the serpent. And then it was one more miracle that he did. They didn't put this in the Charleston Heston movie. If they did that, the jig would have been up. Watch this. Read. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. I'm taking my hand. Let's pretend I'm Moses. God told me, take my hand, put it in my bosom. Put it in my bosom. Okay, read. And he put his hand into his bosom. Uh huh. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was, was leprous as snow. And he took his hand out of his bosom And it was leprous And snow What did he do to his hand? He changed it Read And he said Put thy hand into thy bosom again So he told him to put his hand back in his bosom Read And he put his hand into his bosom again mm -hmm and plucked it out of his bosom and behold it was turned again as his other flesh so if he was white and he turned his hand leprous would it have been that big of a deal he wouldn't have noticed he wouldn't have noticed it remember it's two different leprosies you got the leprosy where the pigment in your hand is a different color why they ain't show this in Ten Commandments? Because you got a white man playing Moses. Remember, it said when he changed his hand the first time, he told him, put it back in your bosom. When he took it out, it was back like the color of his flesh. They didn't put that in that movie. Any movie about Moses, they never put that miracle in there. They'll show him turn the river into blood. They'll show him turn the staff into the serpent. But they don't show that. Because you got to show that his flesh changed colors. His hand... The skin on his hand, the color changed. God changed it. As what? To be a sign for him to show to the, the children of Israel. Look, the Lord dealt with me. I'm finna show y'all. Uh, you took that image down? Yeah, I was trying to get that for Oh, yeah. You can pull that up just to show them. But they never show that in the movie. Showing you what? More things that they keep from us. Why? Because they don't want you to know who you are. You gonna say something? I'm wave. You got that image for me? Pull that up. It could be like an arm, foot, anything, just to show them. Okay. Got patches of white here for the Yep. If it lets you, uh, if it lets you blow it up. So that's just an example. Those are spots. Remember, he changed his whole hand. I'm sorry. No, I said this is just an example with spots of leprosy. He changed Moses' whole hand. 
That's why we went here. He changed his whole hand letters. And then had him put it back in his bosom and turned it back into his regular flesh. Yep, that was one of the three signs that he gave Moses to show the children of Israel. But they don't put that in the movies. They don't do that. They don't show them them three signs that he gave Moses. Because he gave him them signs to show the children of Israel. Because if you show that, you can't have a white man playing them. Because Caucasians is already pale. You understand? You leprous, you might have some pigmentation like this. Where your hand might be leprous. I just seen some people, they have it real bad. If y'all ever seen that, like their hand be a different color. Be a little bit pale. Little spots. Yes, man. Are you talking about albino? You talking about albinos? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those is people they born without the pigmentation in their skin. They still be black. Their skin can be brown, and then like you notice a little spot, and it gets wider and wider and wider. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the example. The pigment gone. Yeah, but that's the example though. But that's gonna conclude the presentation for y'all today that we had for you. We hope y'all got a lot out of it. If y'all didn't get a flyer from us, let us know. We got flyers right there. Our number is on the back, our website, and our address to our school. So if you got any questions, feel free to call us. All right? That's all the clue the presentation today. No problem, no problem. We hope y'all enjoy it. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time.